Here's an RCA Victor 45 RPM record player that I've been uh, asked to uh, work my magic on. have no idea what the deal is with this, so we'll just open it up and see what we've got to work with. And here it is all apart. As you can tell, this is a single tube model, 25L6 tube with its filament wired in series with the 90 volt phonograph motor, uh, which means this set uses a 3 volt crystal cartridge to drive the output stage directly. Okay, well, we'll handle this like we do most record players. We'll get the amp working first and then we will we'll dive into the record changer mechanism. Now the motor turns. We're getting a little action out of the cartridge, but not much. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, that's a good sign. Well, as you can hear, it's producing audio, but that's about as loud as it gets. Obviously, this amp could stand an overhaul, but the biggest issue for the weak audio is likely due to a half-dead cartridge. <coughs> Well, you know, mechanically, this thing's not in too bad a shape. Its automatic functions seem to be working fairly normal. It's probably the main thing this is going to need as far as mechanical work is the cam gear probably could stand to be reconditioned. Same for the rubber drive wheel and the rubber motor mounting grommets are non-existent as you can see. That would, it would help tremendously just replacing those. Okay, let's, let's start on the amp and then we'll worry about the rest of it later. And as you can see, this is a tight little amplifier here. Going to be a little bit tricky to work on, but we can do it. Okay, we're about done with the amplifier. This may just be the lowest end record player amp ever made as far as the one tube job, but this thing is was sure a pain in the butt to work on because it's so packed up in here and the way it's designed. In fact, whenever I replaced the electrolytic filter capacitor, as you can see, I had to mount the new capacitors on top on a terminal strip because there wasn't enough room under the chassis. The selenium rectifier is still good. I replaced the other paper capacitors and this lead running from the volume control to the control grid of the audio output tube was a little bit corroded and snapped off. They used the solid wire instead of stranded wire for that so I just replace that lead with a piece of stranded hookup wire. All I've got to do now is I want to add about a 33 microfarad cathode bypass capacitor plus side to the cathode of the output tube negative side to ground. That'll give this amp a little bit more gain whenever I replace the cartridge. Now the optimum way to do it would be to add another stage of amplification, but since this is a 45 RPM record player, and since a lot of 45s are recorded at a higher degree of modulation, especially ones from the 50s through the early 70s, you know, they'll have a little bit more volume than, say, an LP would, so we might can just get away with adding the cathode bypass capacitor and that might give us enough gain where we won't have to add the extra stage. I'll do it if we absolutely have to, but as packed up as this amplifier is, honestly, I'd really rather not if I can get around it. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah, that car 
Partridge is basically dead. a good cartridge and some minor mechanical repair on the turntable and it'll be good to go. Here we have the tone arm removed and here's the pickup cartridge. Someone's already loosened the screws here. As you can see it's one of the flat metal crystal cartridges and frankly I'm surprised that it even has any output at all. We'll likely replace it with one of the modern fan steel P188, I believe, is the part number. It's what I call the Crosley cartridge. It's the cartridge that's used in all of the cheap Crosley reproductions and basically every other all-in-one phonograph made from the mid-80s on up. The only thing, when I replace the cartridge, I'll get the version with the metal needle. There's actually two needles available for well, actually three needles available for that particular cartridge. Version number one is a sapphire tip needle with a plastic cantilever and version number two is a diamond tip needle with a plastic cantilever and version number three is a diamond tip needle with a metal cantilever and obviously the metal version is the best one. It's more compliant and has better fidelity. Of course, a lot of the Crosley players come with the cheap plastic version. Okay, here's the original cartridge. Well, it may not be original because it's made in Japan, as you can see. So, I suspect that this was a replacement. Or, given that this record player was made in the late 50s, it could have very well... It could have also very well been an original equipment cartridge, but I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards replacement because you see it has these slide-on cartridge clip connectors that have obviously never been soldered to and the original cartridge clip connectors on the phonograph were simply slid over these cartridge clip connectors so I'm thinking this is probably a replacement but at any rate it doesn't really matter it's bad it needs to go and we're going to install something that's better than this ever was Unfortunately, I don't have a cartridge on hand, but I can order one from the VM website. And I'm going to use this little needle guard thing that I removed from the old cartridge as a mounting bracket to secure the new cartridge. You'll see all that once I have the cartridge in my hand. And I'm also going to order some chassis mounting grommets while I'm at it, as well as some rubber motor mounts. And then we should have this thing back in business. Okay, I'll let this be part one. I'll go ahead and upload this since uh, I haven't uploaded anything in a while. And probably in about a week, we'll get to part two of this.